This is Richard back at you guys. A lot of things happening. Trying to get a little uh, trophies figured out and stuff. We're getting really close on those, so having a good time doing that. We got Mr. Torres. 06 Ford F-150 in the house for our 70W. And also, I want to give a shout out to Alex Walk Walkins? Wilkes. Wilkes. That's a hard name for me to pronounce there. Out I don't know Kentucky. why. Out of Kentucky. Out of Kentucky, guys. I believe. Yep, definitely want to get our shout outs out there. But anyway, guys, we got an F-150 uh, 06 model, 5.4 motor, uh, four-wheel drive, leaking out the front seal. It's got some codes in it, but they're all engine codes. Nothing to do with the transmission that we see. The foot is really dark. I, I'm not sure. It, you can tell it's been rebuilt before since it's been painted. The bolts have been painted and stuff like that. So that, that's definitely a giveaway. Now this torque converter here, probably a reman. See some scarring on the hub here. The pump looks like it's really... Uh, now the converter's uh, set really good into the pump gear there, really nice and deep in there. So, why it's leaking out of the front, I'm not for sure. Looks like it's got a nice new front seal in here. Could be leaking around the O-ring here. Uh, bushing could be bad inside, oh, anything you, like that. You start it up and it just pours out. It of just the pours thing. out. Well guys, let's get this tail housing off here. This is four wheel drive. Has a four-wheel drive adapter here. Pretty heavy piece of aluminum right there. We don't ever see these really break much, do we, Teresa? Real heavy duty. Got a gasket here that's got its own seal built into it, its own type glue or whatever you want to call it. Now you notice back here we don't have no governor or anything like that, like our la uh, latest video on our FOD AOD tranny. This is totally computer controlled. And we have our input and output speed sensor. These are interchangeable. You can swap them back and forth. It's just the front one's got a nice looking cover on it. Well, actually, I lied. This one's longer. I, I forgot this is a, a, a later year where the uh, shell, uh, it has to sense all the way through the shell. So I'll, I'll show you that here in just a minute, but you can see the difference in the depth. Now this one here uh, senses right off the reluctor inside the back back here. This one here has to physically go through an item and then uh, sense the, eye, the other shell on the inside that, and count it instead of just reading right up by touching it. I'll explain it to you. Kind of hard to explain that way without showing you. You can kind of look here though. You can see down in here that output speed sensor is going to count that ring gear right there. You can see it looks like a parking tab. Mm -hmm. Click, 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 click. If you look at this one, see it's turning and there's nothing there for it to count. You mm -hmm. notice that? Mm -hmm. Well that shell right there, it's made out of metal, but a magnet won't stick to it. So when I get it out, I'll show you what I'm talking about and how that sensor physically reads through that shell there. So. Now this is an overdrive lockup style unit. Now this isn't the original pan right here. On a four wheel drive we pull the filter off and put this pan on there. That way it sets flat on our jack so we can get it out of the vehicle. And then we put it in, we put the original four wheel drive filter and the deep pan back on it inside the vehicle. Just makes it set on the jack a lot easier instead of having to put some wood on it or anything like that. Now you can see here, uh, they went to like a hard wiring harness. It's like a circuit board. You can just slowly pull it off here. You want to be gentle with it. And it plugs into all the solenoids. You can see the pressure control solenoid, the lockup solenoid, your two shift solenoids and then your case connector here. Now I've seen these go bad where we've had to replace them. You know, causing problems and stuff like that, so. How did you know that that was bad? Uh, it either have a code for a shorted circuit or something on your solenoids or anything like, like that. You replace the solenoid and it didn't fix it. You could ohm it out uh, from end to end too. 
from end to end and check your connector and make sure it's you know the, it's omen good through here. You also have your temp sensor right here too. Okay. I wanted to mention. But yeah, we don't replace many of them. Very seldom do we see it, but anything can happen. Now this bracket right here, you want to make sure when you put it down in there, it locks and holds the pressure control solenoid in the bore. So you don't want to have it, you can actually have this out of whack a little bit like that and, and get it stuck down in there. I mean, it can be done, believe me. But it's got to be popped all the way in and then put that bracket on there. And we have our detent spring here, pretty simple. Now this piece here will not come out of the case until you move the valve body. It's pretty much there until you get this piece off. Now we are putting a Transgo shift kit in this uh, that uh, will protect it from high line pressure problems and stuff like that. Teresa, you told me not to talk with the impact, didn't you? I did. And I did. Sorry about that, guys. Well, we are going to be putting a pressure uh, Transgo kit in it. Uh, that has some pieces that go right here that controls uh, high line pressure problems and stuff like that. I tell you, I believe how hard it is to see with one contact out. I mean, it's like very hard to see. See any more, Teresa? Uh, well, I see a lot. Oh, in I there. see one right there. <laughs> and it's because I don't have my contact in. My right eye's bleary, and my left one's. And I use my contacts just for close up vision right here when I'm working on trannies or I'm in my race car so I can see my dash really good. I still say, I don't know. If that's. The yeah, side. right there. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys, you got to have them. There we go. I don't like wearing my glasses and stuff. You can also see here, we have an aftermarket valve body gasket. I don't like to tear my gaskets up as much. I like to kind of keep them together in case I have to match them up or anything like that. Put all your pieces over there. You can see your pressure control solenoid here. It's out of the bore now, but when you pop it in, see that, that's in all the way. Then your, your uh, bracket will go in and hold it from popping back out. Now you have a converter screen filter right here. It sets in the case. Pretty simple. You don't, if you left it out, it's not going to hurt nothing, but it doesn't catch all the trash that's coming out of your converter. So. That way that pan okay. looks. Now I'll show you something here on these. All these bolts are 10 millimeter and they're the same size, except these two bolts here. These are your guide pin bolts that line your valve body up on the case. So these two bolts here, you can see this hole is kind of oblong. Sets in here like that. This one sets in here like that. Now when they're all the way through, You can physically see here how they stick out right here. See, and that way when it sets on there, it perfectly lines everything up. Now your overhaul kit's going to come with a, a new gasket under here. There we go. All that trash that gets caught in there. How these things break in and wear. See this? Through the years. Yeah. Now, say so we have our lockup solenoid, our two shift solenoids. Now, we will be putting a, like I said, a transgo kit in here. Now, you notice here on my early video on my AOD that we just posted, um, there's no metal ring, no metal piece like this right here. There was one there on my AOD tranny, and I talked about how through the later of the years uh, they got away from this this plate right here. So it is missing. <laughs> These will only go one way, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up or anything like that.
say keep your gaskets just so you can match them up. That way you don't mess up there because some of these kits can come with multiple gaskets. You can see all your check balls here. Actually, I, I did it this way. So, pretty simple. We have a check ball book. Over there. Actually, I got two or three of them uh, that uh, shows you every check ball location that they make. Now, our Transgo kit's going to come with some spring options and stuff like that for your boost valve and other things, and then you're going to be modifying some holes in your plate, too. So, just read the instructions really good. And we have our overdrive accumulator here. Now I talked in my other video how some of these are missing only on the AOD E versions. Get that out of there. This has got a shift kit spring in it right here. That's why it doesn't want to come out. But you really got to push on them to get them out of there. You had this problem with the last one. Yeah, this one's a little different. Even it's once well, yeah. you put the shift kit spring in there, you can't hardly push it in with your thumb even to get this out of there. Come on, there you go. See, because they stack multiple springs in here. Now, if it looks, let me see here what we got down here. This is actually not shift kit stuff. This is factory stuff here. Your shift kit springs and stuff will be totally different. I got the box over there. I could actually open and show you, but they come totally different. And then here's your switch that pops out. It sets in there like this. That way it doesn't spin. You can see right here this little square land sets in there so it doesn't spin. But it sets under the valve body where you can't get it out to to replace it. So you got to pull the valve body if this ever leaks or gets fluid in it. Um, now to get this pressure control seal no doubt you're going to have to pull your pin here. Get that out. Put it somewhere where you don't lose it. Go grab you a 7 8 wrench. And a big long screwdriver. And this is how I get it out of there. I'll take and put it like this and I'll grab my screwdriver and hold it here. And I'll break that nut loose on there. This will go in any direction, so it doesn't matter how you bolt it up. Now this will only go one direction, but it's bent for the right direction, so you can't mess that up. And then we have our pressure control solenoid. You replace every one of these, guys. Every one of these. Then you have your shifter shaft seal. Get you a screwdriver and get under it and just pop it out of there. Put your new one in there, it comes in your overhaul kit. Now, on this later version right here, on the AOD, we had a snap ring we pulled out to get to this third accumulator right here. This one here does not have it. Now, we bought all bonded pistons uh, for this tranny because of the mileage and the way the fluid looked. These are all hard as a rock. They bend a little bit, but I mean, they are fro they're hard as a rock. Where I'll show you before we shut off the the parts that we're going to be putting in this unit. Now, if you notice here too, before I, you know, these are bonded too. The cover and the piston. So, you can kind of see here what a brand new one looks like. The, when you look at for new, it's on how far the tip sticks out to seal. See, in the same way with the cover. You want a good tight seal out here on the edge. Okay. And then you have your third gear one, the same way, you don't have a cover, but you have a bonded piston where the seal is really nice and tight. So, and then of course you get down in here, you have your, your reverse band uh, stuff right down in here. 
see if I can get this off of the. Same way, this stuff here gets really hard uh, on the tips right here and stuff where you have to replace this stuff. A lot of times you just grab it, break it off. I could almost pull that off. It's almost that brittle. So once it shrinks like that, it wears around here, and next thing you know, you can't apply the band. So that's why you want to put always put all your new stuff bonded in there. So. And then we have our overdrive uh, servo here. Now our overhaul kit will come with a new snap ring for this one. These are really bad about breaking. A lot of times you take the valve body off, uh, these will be all crumbled up in here and your band will be burnt up. So you want to put that in there right off the bat. If you don't, if your overhaul kit doesn't have it, then you need to get a new snap ring. Now Transstar's kits come with a new snap ring. So, but same way here, this overdrive piston, if it's all shrunk up and hard, you need to replace it. You can take the clip off here, put the new piston on, put it back together, real simple. Now it does take a special tool to put this together though. Let me go grab it real quick. Cause it, you ain't putting that in with your thumb. Well, we have a tool right here now that we bolt to the case that sets over the top of it like that. And we're able to push that down in there with this and then put our snap ring in. See, Ford AODE servo. Made in the USA, guys. Woo! Yeah. Made in the USA. Here we go. We have our parking up here, your little parking spring. I leave it on when I wash in the case. I don't see any issues there. You know, if you're in a car wash or something, you might want to take it off. You don't want to physically lose it. Oops. Now we always silicone around all of our bolts. There's not a washer that comes on these bolts at all to even have to seal it. But I, I seal every pump bolt, whether it needs it or not. The way the gasket's designed and stuff on this one, you don't have to seal them if you don't want to. But I just, when you build as many as we build, it's, it's habit for me just to do it. Now this is an all aluminum pump. You have your second gear bonded piston right here. Let me see if I can blow it out. Well, it's, it's hard to determine which hole it is too right off hand. There we go. You just gotta start hitting them and see which, what happens. Now your overhaul kit will actually, it'll come with a new one here. See this is all really hard too. You can see your, your new bonded piston here. How the tips really stick out real far where these are bent over. So, with it, what happens is when these get bent over like this and this pump gets hot and expands, that's when it starts leaking around the seal. It might pop in, you think it's tight, but when this tranny gets up to operating temperature, it'll physically leak around here. So, and then you have your Teflon sealing rings here. Now your shift kit could come with some that will work and might not work. You want to check it out and read the instructions. Now these rings here, these are your reverse rings. You see how that ring still looks brand new, still got the marking on it and stuff? We just don't see any wear in these rings. Now to get that off there, you're, you're going to have to break them. Usually we take a little pick and get in between the locks and pop them off and break them. Um, but make sure your kit has them uh, before you break them. Yeah. Just in case, you know, or you might open your kit and one might be broke or something even. You just, you never know nowadays, so. Now, same way here, you want to look at your stator on both sides. Look how, how pretty that pump looks, stator looks. We just don't see any issues with these pumps. But here's the same thing. You want to make sure your cooler line fluid flows, or your air or oil flows through this right here. 
because on your AOD, remember in my other video, there was a spring and ball right here that you had to blow through to open it up. So you see the bushings are really bad in here. Same way down in here. I said, we don't very seldom ever see wearing these pumps. I mean, you'll see here, see it looks nice. and See a little bit of shiny right there, but I guarantee that's no wear. But still put new ones in it, they're cheap. Now, this is where you really want to start looking though. You want to look here for anywhere, from here to here. And I see it. You can see it. And right here, see this right here? If there gets a big rut from here to here, see that right there? Mm -hmm. Right there? So, unfortunately, we'll have to put a body in this and some gears in this tranny. Now, if you notice here, while we're leaking out the front, is because this bushing right here physically slid forward all the way up against the seal. See how far it's down in there? See that right there? Mm -hmm. And you notice it's touching the seal. It moved all the way forward. Once that touches, there's nowhere for the fluid to drain back into the pan. It just has to overlap the seal and go out. So you can put 20 seals in here and it wouldn't matter. It's still going to uh, leak. Let me knock this out real quick. Now what's crazy is, I, I haven't figured this part out yet, but you notice this bushing is able to be staked from going back into the pump gear. It's not staked on the back right here to keep it from sliding forward towards the seal. There's no places for it. But you notice here, you can stake it. Put it what I do is I like to put it in so all the way flush here, stake it, and then take my bushing driver and put it in just a little bit deeper. That way these are locked in really tight right here. You can lock that bushing in too, but we're going to replace this body, but you can see how far that bushing slid forward. That's and that's why it's like that. Now, you want to look here too, guys, because something to move a bushing like this could be bad. It could, you could have motor issues or something. You notice this bushing is dark from here all the way to there like it's never been used. But as I turn it, you can tell the converter's been pushing on it. Uh. See? How it just frees up. And then all of a sudden it starts pushing on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got to look at things like that too. Look at the flywheel, make sure nothing's going on there. Now, on this tranny here, uh, we do have a wave plate. Look how wavy that is. So, when you go to bolt this pump down in here, when you put it in, it won't set flush. It's going to be springy feeling. When you go to tighten it down is when it starts compressing this spring. So and we have a plate right here that keeps it aligned up too as it does it. It's got a lip on it. And the wave goes towards the piston. Like that. And we have our second gear clutches here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it'll say right here, four plate. See, that means four frictions. So, some of these, you get them, get them in here with three, three clutches. And we have Basically, our... Basically, that's telling you there can only be four clutches. Yeah, you need to put four clutches in that design right there. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's our wide band, what I call a wide band. Uh, if you've seen my band in my AOD, video it's only half that size that band's probably that wide right there that's how wide an aod band is and believe it or not this band will not fit in an aod i've tried everything i could do to put this band in there and it won't work it's just it's not designed for it so the drum will hold it but the band won't fit in there you can see here this drum looks really good still 180 grit this drum up this could have a diode sprag Sounds like a bunch of rocks rolling around. Sounds like a little car. Mm -hmm. Locks back the other direction. 
Now you can replace this, these out, but we've had pretty good luck with them. Really good luck with these. We have our reverse clutch here. Just three clutches. I was thinking some of these have a number on them too where you can get four in here too if I'm not mistaken, but I don't see it. Same way with this bevel plate here. You want to look at it and make sure it's not cracked. Wavy, wavy snap ring. Bevel plate. Looks really good. And then you'll have a metal ring that sets on top of your piston. That's what the bevel plate works on. Now some of these, these trannies take tools to put back together. I got a box of special tools over there that shrink these pistons and stuff down to put them in there, or these seals and stuff to put them down in there. So you got to be, on your AOD stuff, definitely you got to have that tool kit to put it together. These you can get a buy with a pick and um, you know, you can get by with one of these a little bit to work it in and stuff like that. Not on this drum, but on your forward and stuff like that. So, place all your bushings. Scotch bright this stuff up in here. That's just shiny stuff. You can scotch bright it up. You got to replace and uh, parts on this thing. Remember me talking about the bearing style in this drum? on my early video and I talked about checking the depth right here so here's a, a bearing style so and they did put them in the later AODs of course we have our forward sealing rings here now these are hooked together they're not scarf cut your kit could come with scarf cut ones or you could just put them on and put some uh, lubricant on them to make them stay We have our forward clutch here. The guy was really, so far, was pretty nice to this tranny. Uh, keep all your snap rings together because every one of these snap rings will fit in each other's each other's drum. So, and they're different thicknesses. So, and then here's. I didn't get to show you this here. This is your anti rattle spring for your second gear clutches. And why they put that in there is because your diodes frag. It causes the clutches to make just a little bit of noise in the case, and they slide that in there like an anti-clunk spring. So it just sets down in there once you get your clutches back in there and quietens them up. Something you don't want to lose. If it fell out or you didn't put it back in there, then it's not going to hurt anything, but you're, you possibly could hear a noise somewhere down the line. Okay. Now we have our forward hub here. You want to look for any type of spline wear. We also have a, a bearing that this, all the bearings in this train go in right side up. This one here is the only one that goes in upside down. And it has a lip. If you put that this way, it's going to set on there and it's going to break these tabs off here. So it has to set on there flat so the lips go down in there and that's what keeps the bearing centered in the shell. See. And make sure you put your bushings down below surface. That way that tabs don't hit it. That's what keeps it centered. Okay, let me show you something, guys. This is what I was wanting to get to on this train because this is really neat. Okay, you remember our input speed sensor I was talking about? That it's longer? This one right here? Well, this shell, right, this is not magnetic. Let me get a magnet. Let me show you. See, that's magnet. This is not. That's why this sensor can read through that shell and count these teeth as this is turning. So basically, this is setting outside the case like this, but it's reading this drum turning here. See, through this shell. Isn't that some crazy stuff? But that's how that works. It counts these teeth here on this forward drum.
for your input speed sensor. And it does it through a non-magnetic type of metal shell. That's crazy. Now we replace every one of these here too. I mean, it's, we see always wear on the teeth, or on the gears, excuse me. Always see a lot of wear here. They changed the gearing up in these things and went to smaller gears and stuff, so we, we see the wear here. That's why we have a, another brand new one sitting there for it, ready to go. Ooh, yeah, that's so, and then uh, also, you remember on the AOD tranny, this is our input shaft. This here's our input shaft on the AOD. This, tra this shaft here locks into the third gear drum. This shaft locks into the third gear drum. It'll actually lock right into that one. But this shaft locks right into the torque converter on the, the, uh, the back side of it that locks to the flywheel, and that's how it goes into direct drive. On this tranny here, this shaft goes to the third gear drum, and it locks into the forward drum, okay? When it goes into third gear, it's automatically locked to the forward input shaft, right? But we still have a lock-up torque converter that the computer locks up. So that's how they, how they added it. So, but that is something how they how they can run a sensor and count that shell through that metal. So better design. Huh? Better design. Ah. Uh, I don't know, they both work. <laughs> they both work. You know, that's how back in the early days they got fuel economy because once they went to third gear, your third gear clutch stayed on and it went into direct drive. It locked it right to the back of the motor, so it went one to one right there. And then you had your fourth gear that even went, you know, farther. So, but on these sun gears here too, you always want to replace your bushing in here, of course, but you want to look at these sun gears too for any type of wear on both sides. And they make two different ones. If you notice here, one gear short, one gear tall. So depending on what year you have, you have to match that up on height right there because this one here is taller. So what we do is when I talk to Raymond at Transstar and he knows we got some type of oddball coming up or a mid-year thing, he'll send me both of them and then we can always send them back. He, he knows it's more important to get the unit out the door uh, then to set on and wait on another day to say, say, hey, Raymond, this is the wrong part. Can you send me something else? He just sends me both of them, and, and we just take care of business that way. So, new sun gear, sun gear shell. Now we're going to get down in here. We, sh we have another anti-clunk spring down in here, too. This one's a little tougher to spot. Hopefully it'll stay in there. It's a, it's a little banana-looking thing, but it keeps us shell tight from rocking back and forth and stuff like that in here. Now you can see this one here only has one bent finger on the end of it where our AOD had two. So let me tell you something guys, this is a big mistake that you can make. That input speed sensor that you have poked in the case on the side, what did I do with it? Okay, here it is. Okay, look at this. I'm going to put this back in the hole right here. All the way in. Grab my flashlight. That speed sensor is setting in the snap ring groove. If you put this snap ring in where well, that snap ring is setting on top of that speed sensor, it will pop out of the groove right there. You have to put the opening, this tab, right here in this groove. And this will go in here, that way it's not touching this sensor. You'll build the tranny and go to bolt this sensor in. And next thing you know, when you bolt it in, you push the snap ring out in the case and you didn't even realize you did it. See? So you got to make sure this piece here is in here. That way the opening of your snap ring is here to here. That way when you bolt your speed sensor in, you don't push the snap ring out of the groove. Okay? That can happen real easy. It's the little stuff that'll get you. Build this nice tranny, put it on the bench, put your speed sensor in, go put it in back up one time, blows the snap ring out of the case, and boy, you're in all kinds of trouble. <laughs> it's called a bad day, and hopefully it ain't a Monday. And then it's gonna be a bad week. Now, I'm gonna knock this out real quick. 
Can you see this anti clunk spring right here, Teresa? Down in here? Yes. You see it right there? Yes. When we get our support in, we'll take and push that down in there. And then also, we want our snap ring to come over the top of that to hold that in there where it can't pop out. So, two things. This has to go where it doesn't push your sensor out, and it also has to make sure it covers that. If not, that'll pop right out, and then it grinds it up in the tranny. So. See, it just popped out. You can hear it. See, and that has to hold that in there. Like that. So, pretty simple. Now this is a big old planetary guys. They changed this planetary up too uh, because of this gear size here. They went to a smaller gear here, different gear ratio. Same way here because this gear runs in here too. There's a lot of gear going on in here. So, But you have your roller clutch here. It will swap out with an AOD tranny actually. It's the same thing. Now the planet won't. And then also this bushing right here. It has to be below surface because you have another shanked bearing that's going to set in there. So if you put that bushing flush, you bolt this together, you're going to knock this bushing out instantly and kill this bearing right here because it's going to start making metal no more when you start the vehicle up. So and I'll kind of show you that here in a second. Of course we have our reverse band. It's been very, very hot. So I replace this. I usually wear it at the tips. Just put a new one in there so you don't have to worry about it. Um, get this out of here. Now on this one here, there's no check ball you got to take out because there's no governor on the output shaft like our AOD. It, this shaft has just come completely out. Now we do have a snap ring that sets in the case down in here that holds your band up that your band sets on. So you want to put that in there, put your band in there. That way it has something to set on. It won't fall to the bottom of the case. Now on your AOD, uh, this drum won't come out right here like this one does. You got to take the output shaft out and it comes out the back. That's the difference in them too. That's your roller bearing. Now our AOD uh, bearing was a one-way bearing. It, the, the race was the shaft right here. And then you had your bearing and the race on the back was built to it. Well this one here is one bearing that doesn't use this as a race. So. Got your three sealing rings this time instead of four. Got sealing rings down in here. Try to get it out of there. Now these are your third gear sealing rings here. Two of them come in your kit. Check your ring gear for any type of wear. And then we here we have our third gear clutch here. Now this is that bearing I was telling you that's stepped. Right there, there's a step on it, see it? Right there. So that bushing has to be far enough down to where that bearing sets in there without touching it. If not, you'll ruin the bearing and the bushing. Now there is also a spacer right here. This spacer here, uh, what it does, it keeps the snap ring locked in the drum. You can see it here. There's a snap ring in here that can come out. When this drum spins high, high RPM, the snap ring can get let go. So they have that in there like that. And the bearing sits on top of it to hold that snap ring from coming out. Now, also, when they went to the AOD, or excuse me, the 4R70Ws, uh, they went to what we call stamp steel drums. Um, I took them out there outside. Darn it! I know I got one inside. No, but anyway, these drums used to be cast metal. Now you can tell they're like they put them in a, a flat piece of metal and they push it in there and it, it, this comes out. I mean, it's kind of cheesy looking, but they will not interchange uh, with an AOD. They made there's differences right here where that that oil hole is right there. They moved it, so these will not interchange. So. And then we here we have our third gear clutch. Got a six clutch drum. Got a high snap ring. On the AODs, now the snap ring group can be a lot lower and you have less clutches. So that's kind of how they did that. 
this drum's got a lot of wear in here in these bushing areas. So this drum's pretty much toasted. Okay, guys, 4R70W, not too bad. I mean, kind of like an AOD. I mean, they, they built them both pretty much the same, just bigger, better parts in the 4R70W. Teresa, I want to thank you. Oh, by the way, thank you, Teresa, for reminding me to do that. Um, gives you a general idea of kind of what we put in these. And we have our bonded piston, like I was telling you. We have our clutches. Uh, we have a pressure control solenoid. We got some other solenoids we'll pull off the shelf. Uh, we got a pressure, uh, pressure control solenoid here. Our transgo kit. We have our bushing kit. And this transgo kit, it will come with all kinds of parts. But guys, it's worth putting it in. So take your time reading the instructions. Now, like I said, some of the ceiling rings they talk about might not work. And the chamfer, really look at that really close. Um, pretty simple. Just another day at the office, huh, Teresa? <laughs> One after another after another, guys. But guys, don't forget to subscribe. It's Thursday. Come on Friday for the weekend. We are ready like yesterday. Y'all have a great day.